couple of minutes. But uh, just come enjoy the ride with us while we uh, do that. Do you want to bring the laptop over here to, uh, yeah. so I can read out questions while you set up that? Well, Tyler, Tyler can even read out questions. And then can you get that forward camera up so I can see where I'm going. <laughs> no. now, it's uh, quite windy right now. We've got wind speed of 38 knots. You might hear the wind alarm go off in a couple of minutes. It's been sporadically going off. I've got the windscreen wipers going because of the uh, bow spray. So quite blustery conditions. But uh, once we pull into the Bonifacio cut, it usually calms down a little bit. It's quite on our nose normally, uh, so not a big issue. We're pretty used to having these sort of windy conditions. So, yeah. Uh, got quite a few questions uh, flowing through here. First one we've got here is how often do you perform man overboard drills or fire drills? Oh. Oh, how often do we perform man overboard or fire drills? Uh, we do them monthly. Uh, they are part of our monthly checks. We are a full ISM vessel. So um, once a month, all the crew will normally do a fire drill. The guys put on the fire suits. Um, that's actually probably something that we can do in one of the next videos, Blair. Yeah. You go through that. Same with man overboard drills. We kind of normally do like a big scenario. So it'll be like a man overboard drill. And then, uh, and it's just a, it's just a scenario base. Um, you know, everyone gets out, points their finger, we turn around and we pick up something like a life jacket or whatever. Um, and then that will normally go into an abandoned ship where then everyone puts on the full survival Gumby suits, and uh, and we go from there. So no, we do we do do them about uh, monthly. We have a whole bunch of different sort of. Uh, checks and drills that we have to do, uh, not just uh, fire and abandon ship, but there's also ISM, uh, cyber security, what else have we got? Um, we, do, we, we also do like drills for stowaways. Stowaways is always a good one. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yep. Most of the uh, guests are usually stowaways. After the, uh, <laughs> after the charter, it's usually hard to find them. And some ex-crew. <laughs> and some ex-crew. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, another one here coming in for how long is the captain on duty for and is he there all season? Uh, how long am I here for and am I here all season? Uh, oh, Blair just got hit by a wave. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am usually on rotation, so I, I same as like what the chefs talked about last uh, week. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm on 2-2 two -two rotation normally, so I spend two months on the vessel and then I rotate off for two months. However, I currently don't have a rotational partner because when we purchased uh, this loon, the 220 loon, um, Captain Jason, who used to rotate with me, stayed on 180 and I came here. So uh, I haven't got one at the moment. So I've been here since April. I'm about, I've got 22 days until I go on vacation and then a, a temp captain's gonna come in and then run the boat across the pond. So maybe next season, I'll, uh, I'll have a rotational partner. And it's maybe, if he passes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And knocks the bike, boat backwards and water pressure. Yeah, that's the interview. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else we got, Ty? Uh, why do you have so many sexy sappers on board? Oh, come on, stop making questions up now. <laughs> no, it's okay. it's, it says, why do you have so many sappers on board? Why do you have so many sappers on board? Uh, it's just kind of the way the industry is right now. Um, when I first joined the industry in the early thousands, it was uh, a lot of Australians. Um, but uh, right now, there's a lot of South Africans in the industry. Every boat has uh, quite a few SAFAs on board. The, um, I guess, I mean, it's let's, let's ask a SAFA. I mean, it's what, because of job opportunity, being able to get uh, high paying jobs that aren't in the South African rand and you get paid in either euro or dollar. Uh, also, I mean, in South Africa, you guys have got, to, they go to like high school uh, careers days and stuff, don't they? And promote the yachting industry and all the schools there. So you guys, I guess, know about it and have a lot more uh, awareness of the yachting industry versus say, like, I never knew yachting existed. Well, we, we didn't really know either. It was more just word of mouth. I think like one South African came across and then uh, from there told his brother or sister, a few friends and uh, 
I think if you meet most South Africans, most of them know each other, one way or another, and that's just because it's almost stayed within a network of, of friends and word of mouth. And yeah, maybe now it goes to schools. Uh, I'm not actually not too sure. They never came to our school. Yeah. So, uh, huh. Yeah. But yes, definitely opportunity coming out from the country, making a way out there. Mm -hmm. What uh, what are we streaming in today, Blair? Are we in 480? We are still in 480p, but our internet should be more stable this time. Yeah. So yeah, guys, uh, we are still on Starlink internet. Uh, we are working on getting a better uplink speed. Uh, Starlink, great down downlink, download speeds, not the best uplink speed. So uh, we do apologize if it's a little buffery some now or a little pixelated. Um, hopefully by next week's video, we're, um, we'll have a we're going to stick a 5G SIM card in as well to do the bonding so we have a little bit of more of a stable uplink uh, speed yeah. connection. So you actually uh, got one question here. Yep. Um, do, we have, or do we have any merch, like t-shirts? Do, oh, do we have any merchandise? <laughs> we are working on it. Blair's been Thanks slaving. Thanks Paul's face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love Captain Paul. Uh, <laughs> <That's with her. laughs> Blair's been slaving away on the Spotify account, uh, not Spotify, Shopify account. Um, it should be hopefully live in the next week or two. Uh, you know, we are designing all kinds of things, t-shirts, polos, hats, uh, trying, to, trying to keep it as much as the uniform as possible so you guys look like one of us. But um, it's a little hard right now because all of our uniform is custom made and uh, trying to find a print on, design, uh, on demand company that will keep keep the, with the same stylings as our uniform has been a challenge, but I think we're getting close, right, Blair? Yeah, we're definitely getting there. Um, yeah, some people are actually following us all from the start. They want to know, um, what's the status of the new chase boats? And when are we getting it? Oh, now I've been working on that all day long. Oh. Uh, the new chase boat went in the water yesterday. She looks amazing, and Vera's uh, just doing the final sea trials on her, and then she's going to join us in Croatia in, on the twelfth, so it's Wednesday. Fifteenth. Uh, Fifteenth. Yes, yeah, so next. Yeah, so next week Wednesday. Yeah. And uh, and then she's ours. So I'm super excited. The guys at Envera have done a great job, and uh, we're really looking forward to taking delivery of it. There you got a got a few uh, shouting at you for for your good video skills and. Uh, Shout-outs for all the chefs. <laughs> <laughs> Blair's just blushing in the background. <laughs> what, what? Oh! <laughs> Dill's coming for Blair's spot, eh? <laughs> oh, Dill, if you're watching this, you know, good luck, buddy. But uh, no, we're looking forward to, uh, we've got a tandem charter actually with Loon 180 coming up in uh, about 10 days time. So uh, super excited to see all the 180 crew. And uh, we haven't seen them since we were together in Marseille. So really, really pumped, you know, maybe even have time to have a sneaky beer with them. So uh, they'll, be, they'll be great to have both boats together uh, doing a charter. Yeah, especially in Croatia. Especially in Croatia. Especially. I mean, if you look right now, it's, what, do you have the forward camera up? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's blowing 36 knots. We haven't had the wind alarm in a couple of minutes, but uh, you know the Bonifacio Sardinia area this time of year can get quite squirrely. We're definitely in it right now. Croatia, on the other hand, usually glass calm, flat water. Uh, some of the some of the coolest stern ties get anchorages and bays to yourself versus uh, sharing them with thousands of other people. So really, really excited to get back to Croatia. Okay. Doc Master just texted me. Uh, there's a ferry pulling out at 7, and then we can clear afterwards. Okay. The time is 22, so I might just slow down a couple of minutes, a couple of knots here. Just text Michael back. Yeah. <laughs> you see that? Yeah. Not the sailboat? Uh, no, it's the sailboat. <laughs> There's a uh, there's a Yankee Clipper or Starship. 
uh, in on the dock and there's one of the big sailing cruise ships. So we'll go past them on the way. Oh, cool. Yeah, definitely. If you're in Bonifacio, come by and say hi. Uh, we do have guests on, so please obviously respect their privacy, but we always love to meet people, so we'll come out and, uh, and say hi for sure. Someone's asking why you're not wearing your captain's hat, Paul. <laughs> oh, no. The captain hat only comes out at special times, though. Yeah, the, the captain hat usually only ever comes out if you're being fired. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we try not to put it out too often. It's, uh, yeah. There it is, hey? Oh, he doesn't have four stripes. I just become the captain cap holder. Yeah. Give it to the owner. Yeah. Maybe you can wear it on the tender. Chase book captain. That's when that hat comes out. It means we're serious. So you know, it's not friendly, funny. You know, banter. It's you know, captain's hat on. We need to have a serious chat. So all the all the crew run in that scatter. Whenever they uh, whenever they see me wearing that hat, <laughs> Blair knows it. <laughs> but Blair's been called in a few times in these first few weeks. Oh man, still here. Yeah, Paul didn't have the captain's hat then, so you're lucky. All right, so we just got told the um, there's a ferry pulling out of Bonifacio at um, at 7 p.m. It is currently 6:44. So we've just got to slow down and let him depart. So I'm actually, what I'll do, I'm going to come over to the cliffs a little bit. Maybe get a little bit calmer water. Give the guests a good view of the cliffs and the stairs. And then, uh, and then while we just waste some time until this ferry departs. Sweet, that sounds good. Can you just write... In there, uh, we've been told to stand by for a ferry that's departing at seven. So here we go, coming over. We just had Modiot Ken show behind us, the big green. What is she? She's an admiral, isn't she? Uh, tucked in around the corner here. I um, was hoping to give you guys a view of her, but. She went and hid, so um, I guess she's not going to follow us in this evening. So we've got Corsica to the north, and then we've got Sardinia behind us. So this is called the Bonifacio Straits. It is always windy here every time we come through. It kind of works like a funnel. So you've got the wind that comes down off the south of France and then just funnels in through these straits and blows out. So you can always pretty much expect these sort of conditions while here in the Bonifacio Straits. Really cool for a uh, kite surfing session yeah. or a lot of sailboats in this area. You always see a lot of sailors. You know, we're, we're big enough that it doesn't really affect us, but uh, the deckhands hate it because the boat's always covered in salt. So uh, you might have seen a little earlier in the stream we were taking some waves over, hitting the bridge windows. So that's the entire boat. And keep in mind, we are a black hole boat covered in salt, so the deckhands will be up late this evening, rinsing and chamois and getting her back to that pristine, you know, beautiful motor yacht before we pull out tomorrow morning and get her all salty again. So uh, rinse and repeat, that is uh, Groundhog Day for the deckies in this area for sure. Rinse and repeat. Mm -hmm. We'll get a shirt made. <laughs> Who's this on our bow? It's a Fed, it's a Houston, isn't it? Yeah. See on ass? Gems, Modiot gems on the bow there. It's uh, probably a what, 50 meter, 55 meter Hisa? 50 meter, yeah. Same shape as G3. Yeah, yeah they're, exactly. They're built in uh, Netherlands, right? Dutch. Dutch, yeah. Yep. The same as us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, there we go. Hopefully this ferry is on time. We are, you know, we're dealing with the French, so uh, they might be on strike. <laughs> but hopefully this ferry is on time, and we'll be able to uh, 
to pull in on time. So I'm just trying to, I've got 12 minutes to blow right now and hopefully they, they slide out of the channel and then we can come in straight behind them. All right, hit me with another question. Let's have a look. So there was uh, one question there asking about what do you use mostly? Do you have instruments that you use or actually do you, do you drive manually? Uh, Earlier we were on autopilot, but now we're just coming over to here to give a bit of a scenic look. So I've gone back to manual, so I've got my rudder controls here, which uh, controls my rudder angle, which I can see up here. Same, imagine, you know, the same as a car, right? You can't see where your wheels are turning, but a car responds so much quicker. So you know what's happening with the boat. She takes a couple of seconds to get turning. And so I keep my eye on my rudder angle. So right now, center rudder, if I come to port, we can do it quickly. You might be able to see it coming over, 10 degrees rudder. Then I'll bring it back to center. Um, so I'm watching that. Got my throttles here. Right now I'm, what are we doing? 800 RPM, which gives us a boat speed of 7.2 knots. So we're just cruising. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all manual right now. Once we're, same as an airplane, I guess, after the takeoff, they just press a button and sit back. We kind of do the same thing. Uh, much easier once we're in the open ocean and just going in a straight line. Autopilot comes on, the RPM stay the same, and then um, we, ju we just cruise and just make sure that uh, we don't hit anything, really. So there's always someone up here watching. We do cruise 24-7, especially on crossings. Uh, say when we're going back to Florida, it takes, well, we haven't done it on this boat yet, but I'm guessing it's probably going to take, what, 12 days, 14 days? Yep. And so the boat, the boat never stops. Um, we, we watch the weather, wait for our best weather window, and then we go for it. So uh, myself, Tyler, second officer Bjorn, we all take turns doing four hour shifts. So four hours on, eight hours off, four hours on, eight hours off for two weeks as we uh, run her across the, across the pond to the States. Yeah. So um, yeah. we're looking here. Don't want to get too close in here. We can come a little bit further, but uh, this wasn't part of our passage plan, so I don't want to do a Costa Concordia. That's um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Australian. Yeah. I saw a question um, asking what our favorite port in the Med is. Oh, this actually has to be one of them. I reckon yeah. this is definitely top five. This one? Yeah, this one's definitely up there. It's it's such a cool port, and you'll see why as we uh, as we pull in and then do the whole back down into it. Uh, Havar's always a winner. Yeah. Yep, you said you and me said it at the same time. <laughs> Havar's always a fun one. It's fun when the guests are on. It's more fun when the guests are not on. Um, <laughs> uh, Palmer, Palmer's always a fun one. Yeah. You know, uh, and then uh, what else? I don't know. Just depends. Normally, like a small little town. Us. Mm. Porto yeah, Ferrario has yeah, been you guys fun. Had a really good one, Porto Ferrario. Mm -hmm. That was nice. On Elba. Yeah. And then uh, actually just across the way in Sardinia. What, Porto Chavo? Uh, pretty. Oh, I can't afford Porto Chavo. Uh, it looks pretty from the dock, but. Uh, <laughs> just driving it back out. That's it. Yeah, it's ahead. What's going on, Chef Nina? No, we got Chef, Chef Nina. Nina. No. Come on up, you want to drive? <laughs> Sure. Yeah, my almost expired, so... It's fine. Oh, you're fine. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's, let's give her a mic. Oh, shit. Now you're in. Oh, oh you're no. driving, so come on. I'm just going to stand here and look. Yeah, you've got a yacht master's call and expired yeah. yacht master's. <laughs> totally fine. It's, it's, it's all voice acting. Yeah. up over your shoulder. Ah! Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> you really are. Oh, you're yeah. already. We're actually, yeah, we're live. <laughs> Already? Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, we have... Hi, guys! 3,800 people watching you right now. Wow, hi! <laughs> <laughs> no, he's joking. Uh, just blows my mom, really. Yeah. Just blows mom, really? <laughs> An extended family. Yeah. A lot of them. Oh, amazing. Yeah, everyone looks a bit excited to see you. Yeah. Come on. Got questions for Nina? Questions? Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. This is not my domain. You know, she's, she's got the up master. Are you better at baking or piloting? <laughs> Definitely way better at baking. I did a nice birthday cake on this trip, I'll have you know, sure. and I have not done any piloting. <laughs> drove a dinghy. I drove a dinghy. You did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And it came back in one piece. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Low expectations there, I see. <laughs> well, the two pieces were attached. Yeah. <laughs> Duct tape. Yeah. Are we waiting for port clearance? Yeah. It's announced you got uh, 10 minutes to wait. Mm. Oh my god, it's been ages since I've been here. I think I was last You're year, 2015. It's cool. It's so What's gorgeous. for dinner today, Nina? For dinner today, uh, the crew had a spectacular spaghetti a la vodka with um, like a creamy tomatoey sauce and a, lot, a nice chimichurri left over from the guest lunch. Yum. Yeah, can't Sweet. waste that. Some chicken. And uh, the guests are actually eating dinner off, so yeah, I. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> you working. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Always on. Always on. What was dinner last night? Dinner last night was Mexican. That was amazing. That was good. Yeah. We had Baja fish tacos, like a crumbed avocado taco. We had some chicken and cheese taquitos. Yeah, the crew jumped into the galley with the leftover churros. Yeah. Oh, yeah, some churros. Oh. And then straight oh, away. All crew. Oh. Yeah, I'm surprised. Shawnee said, it's like as soon as I, like, Paul will be straight here. Uh, no, nah. nah, I, I was a little busy at the time. By the time I got around to it, someone had licked the ball. But luckily, there's a bowl of cookies for you. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, did you get your cookies? Yeah. yeah. All three cookies. Ooh. Okay, oh, actually, is there a white chocolate macadamia one there? I'm just going to take a nibble. Yeah, there is. <laughs> oh, it's my vibe. My, sub, my favorite Subway cookie is white chocolate macadamia. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm. I'm going to give this back while I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got you. There we are. Yeah, no, no one likes hearing me eat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who else is going to come visit? I heard, did you see Shawnee's, uh, Shawnee's Instagram post? Watch me dock the boat with Captain Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Paige is going to come up here and uh, pretend. Yeah. I think we need to get Paige to dock the boat one day. Docking with Paige. Docking with Paige. Docking with Paige. Real time. <laughs> All right, what we got, Blair? Let's have a look. Mm, some stuff about me. Oh, there. shit. <laughs> Sorry, shout out to Holly. <laughs> and the S bomb. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's all right, she's a chef. You should really see what it's like when the cameras turn off. Ooh. Yeah. Nina, when yeah. is your next video coming out? <laughs> that is the question. Oh, bad. If all things go to plan, the next video will be out on Sunday. But I also need to pin Paul down at some stage to get a quick little Q&A. Oh, I'm in it. I think it's time we had the captain in the video. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think Blair says hi as well, doesn't he? Big, big shout out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so it is 6.56. So we have about four minutes until this ferry. Let's see if we can see him on the computer here and when he starts moving on AIS. So all, other, all vessels over 400 gross tons have what's called AIS. Uh, and basically AIS is a, a tracking system, same as the planes like FlightAware. So you can track us, even us. You can look up where we are at any point, at any time. So um, I've now just put it in on the ship, the mighty ferry Arados. And uh, we'll keep an eye on her when she starts moving so we can get out of here, but hopefully soon. You should do one of these in the galley. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've got three, three cameras, different angles. Yeah. One of these in the galley, in galley service. Life. Yeah, same yeah. as the As if service isn't stressful enough already. Do you want to, <laughs> do you want to come drive a boat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. If we're I comparing. Can, you can kill people, I can't. <laughs> you got, you've got a lot more expensive mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm like, oh no, just don't deceive us. Oh, I just lost a finger. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we did discuss it. We did. I don't think you I could tame Shawnee though. Do you think we should do a live in the galley? Oh. Do, uh, but is Sean... Oh, okay. A little question yeah, ask, out to the ask folks. The question. See, see what should we do a live from the galley? Which I frankly find terrifying. 
<laughs> Blair hasn't even filmed me in the galley during service yet because I think the one where you did, we were running two yeah. services concurrently. And we were scared. serving ice creams at the same time as mains, and it was a bit like, get out of here! <laughs> filming chefs during service time is always dangerous. It's just. There might be a flying object. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even go down there, I'm terrified. <laughs> I, uh, I come in afterwards. You come in early morning. Yep. Before. Mm -hmm. yeah. I come in, my, I do a morning round every morning, I get up, I make my coffee, I come in, I check the bridge team, and then I just sort of do a lap of the boat, so I'll stop in, you know, go have a chat with Nina and Sean. More often than not, it's just uh, talking <laughs> rubbish than actually talking about the day, but uh, we, we often... It's productive chats, yeah. isn't it? No, no, that's good, make sure we're all on the same Yeah, page. and then I head out the galley door, and I normally head down to the crew mess. Wait, hold up. You go to the crew mess. <laughs> Actually, that's a lie. No. Normally the girls are in pantry, so I'll see them there. And then, uh, from there to the, down to the engine room, checking in the engineers, make sure everything's running smoothly. And then from there, deck team. Cool. Cheers, Nina. All right, thanks, Nina. And then back up to it, the bridge, and that's it. It's a definite yes to Nina's live stream in the, in the galley. There. I think we should make it happen. I think so. Everyone yeah. says we should, so... Definitely. Yeah. What other uh, special guest appearances are we going to have while we're waiting here? Maybe we can get Shawnee up here. I'm, <laughs> sure, I'm sure he'll pop through shortly. All right, how's that fairy doing? Yeah, he's still there. So Gems, that uh, Heeson, is just going past the ferry dock now. <clears throat> so hopefully once he's clear, See, there's a bit of a traffic log though. There's another yacht, Infinity 9, Manta T. So there's a bit of a line up out there. The smaller boats can go in and sort of line up, but uh, we need to wait for permission to enter because we can't, we can't maneuver as freely as they can, especially in this wind. Yep. Sean, um, Sean's definitely needed to come up here, but while we wait for him, I'm gonna bang through some questions because there's quite a few piling up. We start. If the captain is on the bridge, can anyone drive the vessel? Um, there is only three people that can yeah. technically drive the boat: myself, Tyler, and Bjorn, the officer, the uh, certified officers. Um, so there's always one of us on the bridge. But um, when the boat's always moving, there is two people up here: myself and there'll be a, an officer and a lookout. <coughs> and uh, but every now and then, if the conditions are nice, you know, and uh, it's an easy day. Uh, like a docking, we'll do it. I think we need to do a docking with Paige. I think so. Yeah, we'll be standing next to her, but um, and giving her full instruction. But because yeah. uh, she likes to talk a big game and thinks she can do it, I reckon she could. You can just put on the other side and just pretend that she's driving. Like and you just drive on the one side. Like Bjorn. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's have um, a look. Where's this ferry? Come on, guys. Are uh, we on Starlink or VSAT? We are definitely on Starlink at the moment. Yeah, the Starlink is good. It's just that we struggle with upload speed. It's, it's the, the only downside of Starlink, but our download is amazing. Um, you actually can't see the chief stew. She is busy with guests at the moment. I think they are doing dinner service or doing no, they're, they're doing dinner off the boat. But cocktails. Yeah, cocktails at the yeah. moment. Cocktail hour, always a good so one. That's, that's what's happening. My favorite hour of the day. <laughs> yeah. She did promise us a spicy margarita though, yeah. Ooh, didn't she? Were yeah. you were you here? Or? I wasn't here. For oh, that. so she didn't promise. It wasn't better, you then. If, if you were, yeah. no one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She came up here and promised Tyler and I a spicy margarita. She got, at first asked for a coffee, yep. if we'd like a coffee. We both declined and she said spicy margarita and we both agreed. So hopefully, so, once, hopefully once we're tied up, yeah. she uh, holds true to that. And uh, yeah, we'll be, yeah. Uh, we'll be safely on the dock then. So I'll punch out of the clock. Paige can take over. Paige can take <laughs> over. <laughs> Classic. All right. They've all got no ferry movement. Come on, guys. No. So we're just holding still now. Got uh, about one knot of boat speed. Just sitting head into wind. Sorry if the forward camera is looking straight into the sun. 
I've changed it to the oft. Yeah, but um, we just uh, I think we just holding it still. Yeah, go, go see what he's up to. He, he thinks the radio's not working because the Wi Fi's down. <laughs> <laughs> so, to make this live stream happen, we actually turned all the crew's Wi Fi off. So, you might actually have some grumpy people come through. Normally, uh, normally when the internet goes down, we know about it within seconds. <laughs> this should be good. Time. What um, what's the ETA on that ferry getting out of our way? What was that question, there, Blair? What's the ETA on this ferry getting out of our way? He was supposed to be out by seven, so uh, he still hasn't started to move. But um. Hopefully soon. Hmm. Okay, cool. So, yeah, as soon as we get out of this direct sunlight going into the port, I think it'll look beautiful. Yeah. We've got about a quarter mile to go until the harbour entrance, so we're just off of it over, over here. So just sort of staying out of the way, giving the ferry, when he pops out, a, a lot of room so he can just pass us safely. And then we'll s sneak in behind him. Uh, I like to do about three to four knots of boat speed when coming in here because it is quite tight and by ha having that momentum I can maintain my steerage a lot easier other, other than uh, going slow and being a lot more affected by uh, wind and current. But um, Bjorn, do you mind popping the wing stations out, man? While we're waiting, we might as well do our, our pre-arrival checks. <clears throat> Just moving the camera quickly. Yep. Engineers, engineers. Hey mate, am I good to turn on bow thruster? All clear for bow thruster, three generators on. Copy that, three generators. Bow thruster on now. So, uh, we have a, an electric motor bow thruster. And uh, so to do that, we just need to make sure that we have maximum power. So the boat does have three, three generators. So when we're doing uh, close quarter maneuvers like this, um, obviously one generator is handling the house, so powering the lights, the washing machines, the galley, uh, everything. And then the other one, we can run with two then, the second generator will power the bow thruster, but we might as well turn on all three so that if we lose one, you know, in the crucial moments of docking, we have a backup immediately straight there. So uh, we make sure that all, all of them are running, but I always have to call down to the engine room first before taking the bow thruster, because if they only have that one on and I bring that bow thruster online, then um, then I can black the ship out. And uh, guests don't usually like it too much when um, when there's no lights or internet. So uh, just had to do that. You'll see Bjorn. Bjorn just opened the wing station out over on the port side. He's just about to open uh, starboard side now. And then after that, we're going to go and do our pre-arrival uh, pre checks. It's arrival this time, isn't it? Yeah. So um, basically we have a, we go through, we check that every station has forwards and reverse in both gears, has steering and has bow thruster. So we make sure that everything is working properly at the stations before pulling in, so. I told, uh, told Sean you're gonna uh -oh. get a new limb drive. Yeah. Hey, I'm on the thrusters now, Blit. <laughs> Look who it is. <laughs> Shawnee. Whoa, how are you doing, Captain? <laughs> this is a little terrifying having you up here right now. Oh. But welcome yeah. aboard, Shawnee. Oh, thank you. Just have to come have a little squeeze to see what you guys are doing up here. I see you've got the, the shizzles on. Always. <laughs> so today is actually a good day for me. Camera, right. Camera's over here uh, on the tripod. So ah, today's today a good day because I've just um, finished my three month probation. Oh, was that today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's still today. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, working day's over. Five o'clock. No, so no, I'm, I'm officially dinner. permanent on noon. Captain <laughs> stuck with me. Whoa! <laughs> made it, made it. That was yeah. that was touch and go for a while there. Uh, a really couple of times. <laughs> Normally. <laughs> All right. Let me find out what's going on. So 
What's your favorite uh, crew meal to make, Shawnee? Um, well, I do love a bit of Mexican, and so does everybody else. Yeah. Uh, we love doing a bit of pastas, pizzas, definitely. But we try and keep everyone healthy and just do loads of salads, clean proteins, nice. fish. You got, you got some, maybe one of the best pizzas I've had. Oh, oh ranking it, eh? Ranking it. So good. We've got one coming up tomorrow evening, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. but it's for the guests, don't worry. Oh, there'll be some left. <laughs> 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 what are you? No. Yeah, no, no, no. Send a little margarita yeah. out down our way. I have to say this. Someone says extend this probation. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not do that. Otherwise, I have to start behaving again. <laughs> so good. Oh, God. Jeez. So that was you behaving? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I'm going to start cooking proper food. <laughs> Trays for days. Tray bag chicken, tray bag lasagna. There's a little, looks like there's a little 40 meter trying to sneak in front of us here, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna close the door on him. Get in line. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's asking, have you blacked out Loon before? Have we blacked out Loon? It doesn't happen often. Um, every now and then, if there's a generator, the generator that's online, if there's an issue or something, uh, more often than not, it happens on shore power. Yeah. Uh, when we're when we're plugged in at the dock and then the power trips, the boat will go completely black for you know 10, 20 seconds, while then the generators will automatically kick in. So um, it does happen, but not not often. Uh, all the main services, like all the bridge and uh, all the communication equipment and all the vital stuff is on a, uh, inverters. So, power, we don't lose the bridge, we don't lose lights and uh, fridges and galley and laundry and all those, uh, you know, high energy services, they, they do drop out for a little while, but it doesn't happen often. All right, so it looks like he's gonna sneak in through us. That's okay, he's just like a little 30 meter or so, you'll see him coming on across our bow shortly. What a cheeky little chopper. Right? <laughs> Gee. It's all right. I'm still waiting on the dock master here to text me back. Do we have any of the boys out on deck? Yeah, who's that, Trissy? We need to check our indicators and window wipers soon. See if the reverse gears are working. Oh, I think we might have movement. Somebody's asking what we're using to do this live stream. It's not the first question I've seen. Um, we're using Logitech Mevo, which is their whole like ecosystem of Logitech live streaming cameras. They've got like really good software for it. So um, yeah, that's that's what we're using at the moment. Not not too bad. I mean, keep in mind this is only our second live stream. We are definitely not professionals at this <laughs> by a long shot. Yeah. We're and sailors. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I probably should be better at this. But no, that is your job. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> good work for us. For work is a strong, because he works about as much as you do. Oh, <laughs> we're just efficient at our jobs, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it. Boy. We can get it done between nine and five. Okay, we have a ferry moving. Woo! So, all right, he's coming off the dock. I'm watching him on, here on the screen. I've got his... Uh, watching his AIS dot move across the screen. So he's on his way out. So um, as soon as he's out, we'll uh, start making our way in. Hey, Ty, can you come back up here, please? Do crew have to have visas to visit each port? Uh, no, we don't have to have visas, but just depending on what countries we enter and also depending on the crew's nationalities. So as South Africans, which majority of the crew are, we will need a visa for, obviously a Schengen visa for the Mediterranean areas. Um, a, um, yeah, something for, sorry, let's say. Um, okay, can we do pre-arrivals? Sorry, yeah. just gonna do pre-arrival checks. Um, I'll give that to Shawnee. Yeah, as I was saying, we need um, U.S. Hey, visas go. to cool. enter the Take States, um, and yeah, but obviously Paul being Australian, he needs a lot less visas to enter the, the areas that we go into, which is 
quite nice, the perks of being Australian. And that we're better at rugby. Oh, that's not what the Ooh. score said. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let me just switch this up. Uh, do we ever have language barriers with some of the harbour masters? Um, not really, hey. I think everyone's got a decent understanding of, of English in the places we go to. Um, we're, we're pretty lucky. We go to all the, the main kind of destinations that um, you can travel to in, in the yachting world. So we don't really have a problem with that. But as soon as you start, as soon as you start venturing off the beaten track, you will definitely have a problem with with language barriers coming into ports and stuff like that. Those glasses. Are you, are you taking us into Bonifacio, Tar? Eh? Paige is taking the one side. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't trust her putting a plate on the table. That's literally her job. <laughs> She's in the laundry. <laughs> I was, going, I was going for something else, but I had to stop there. Okay, so I'm just doing the pre-arrival checks here. So Tyler's out on the wing station. And um, so what he's going to do is I'm going to pass him command now over on port wing. And then he's going to take command now. So I'm watching everything that that station does. So Tyler's out there. And then... Let me come back so I can see him, Sean. Yep. Port ahead. Port astern. So we just go through every manoeuvre, make sure that everything works at all stations. Starboard ahead. Signal station, Mariot Loon, go ahead. So I'm getting radioed. One zero, copy. Yes, good evening, sir. Mario Uh Yes, sir. We are going into Bonifacio. I'm just waiting for this ferry to come out, and then I have clearance to enter. Yes, the ferry's coming out now, and then I will proceed on in. Yes, the vessel is in good condition, no defects on board. Thank you very much, sir. We'll see you tomorrow. Going back 1-6. So that was the Corsica signal station. So um, basically, like, uh, like an ATC, air traffic control, they um, want to know what all the vessels in the area are doing. So um, he just radioed up, making sure that we are actually entering into Bonifacio as we've been sitting here a little while. And um, then he always, they always ask uh, how many people are on board, is the vessel in good condition, is there any defects? So now we're through that. Tyler, can you grab 09 and radio Bonifacio Port for me, please? Thanks. Bonifacio Port, Bonifacio Port, Maria Lee. Make sure your volume's up. Yeah. So, <laughs> you want to put the forward camera on? Yeah. Be able to see the ferry that we've been waiting for. Bonifacio Port. Bonifacio Port. We are just straight up into the wind at the moment. I mean, into the sun, sorry. So, it's not yeah. The best. She'll be kind of, I'm coming through it though. <laughs> Apparently, we've got to get Pagey up here. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> After the docking, we'll yeah. bring her on. <laughs> <laughs> when she brings the log. Live streaming is a, live streaming is distracting enough. Um, you have a challenge for that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a live stream with Nina, but how about a live stream with Paige in the laundry? Ooh. Yeah. How is she? Uh, you know. Classic. That would be a good one. What about Moo? Yeah, I'll never get a boyfriend if you t if you show me this photo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Although it's amazing how many people have actually commented on that when you showed Moo in the laundry. Exactly. And uh, so many guys, there was even a guy today, uh, 
you know, offering his love to her. So, uh, you she know, just needs to reach out. she just needs to reach out to her. Uh, she wouldn't speak yeah. to me for a couple of days after that. Yeah. <laughs> 13 camels and 12 chickens. Yes, this is Mario Loon. Wonderful, thank you very much. Loon proceeding in. Do I have my, okay. Is there a VHF? Yep. Okay, cool. Okay, so there we go. We have from the port, we have got clearance. So uh, we're going to start our approach now. All crew, all crew. We'll be entering uh, Bonifacio Port. Uh, we'll let you guys all know when you need uh, time to Now we have a little sailboat, which is the bane of our existence, is these little sailboats that are constantly in our way, but I need to maintain speed, so hopefully he hurries up a little bit and uh, we can get past him. Didn't you used to sail, Captain? Oh! <laughs> Weren't you one of these boats once upon a time? I was. I was one of these guys. <laughs> come to the dark side. Well, I definitely came to the dark side. <laughs> but, um, can you unload yep. the route, please? Sorry? Can you unload the route? Yep. No. Uh, we might have to slide past him to maintain steerage, though. It's always going to be fun, but what do we have? 30 knots across our port bow right now. Well, a couple of people are asking what's above your head. This guy, this is my magnetic compass. So I've got a mirror here, and then I look into the mirror, and it shoots right up, and there's a full compass above my head. So uh, that shows us uh, magnetically where the vessel's heading. So if I lose our gyro, which is below me here, and all other instruments, um, I still have the magnetic. So it's just a nice place to display it, easy to look. So if I'm steering by compass, I, I can see it without having to constantly move my head or look down. It's just, uh, it's just there. So I can see right now we're doing 326 and slowly coming around as I make the turn here. So um, 326 on the conning station. Let's turn it down. It doesn't need to be screaming at us. Okay, little sailboats seem to have picked up a bit, so... Uh, it should be good on him. But here we go. This is probably one of my favorite ports to come into. Yeah, so yeah. sick, yeah. yeah. Okay, Dick boys, can I have uh, one of you up port, please? And one of you on the aft? If you want, if I can have you on the aft, please. All right, love you, Shawnee, but right. it is time to get oh, to work. Copy. See you later. So. Cheers. Bye -bye. Good, buddy. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Go back to uh, chilling in the crew mess, huh? <laughs> no, I'm going to go drink my tea now that you just wrapped it. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so hopefully, as we are running satellite internet, and you can see the big cliffs all around us, that hopefully the stream stays. Uh, strong through the whole docking procedure. Uh, just remember we are on Starlink, which is why we're running at 480 in this one and not 4K. Sorry guys, uh, as we get better internet we'll, uh, and a better uplink speed, we'll um, work on getting higher, more high def live streams. But so far so good. Here we go, so entering the port now. Doing quite a tight turn. Got that little one 100, 130 footer in front of us. Hopefully everyone gets moving and we don't have to wait in line too long, especially with this wind. The, uh, so the smaller boats can hold position much better than we can. Oh, and there we go, out of the sun. I can take my sunglasses off. Yeah, getting that drying yeah. up. Blair's putting his drying up. The uh, last time we were here, we lost one. Blair, it wasn't, she wasn't Blair though, so I wasn't, wasn't me. Wasn't you know, me. Chef Dean was a. Uh, Chef Dean had his uh, his drone up, and uh, pushed it a little too far, and it started running out of batteries, and it went onto emergency landing somewhere on the rocks over here. And then he couldn't find it anywhere, and then the next day, as we we're pulling out, we we're actually like, "Hey, Dean, that's your drone." <laughs> <laughs> yep. And, but the problem was we had no tenders in the water, and the chase boat had already left. So uh, he was panicking a little bit, but we eventually uh, got the chase boat to come back. 
and uh, managed to collect it. So he was very lucky. But um, I think we lost, we lost, we definitely lost one here last year, though. So uh, yeah, thought, you yeah, know, yeah, I think we did. So, yeah, and then almost in Croatia, but then we luckily retrieved it in the trees. Yeah, that one got stuck in a tree. Yeah. It's only bridges that Blair hits. Yeah, yeah. I only hit bridges. Run run the battery sometimes. Okay, so it looks like we've got a bit of a traffic jam. So you've got this sailboat and this little day boat. And, uh, and then that Heeson is still in line. So is there anyone at the end of the channel next to us today, Ty? Um, I don't feel like we have anyone just yet. There might be someone coming a little later. I saw Samadhi. Uh, oh, no, we've got some guys at the end now. Pasha. I don't know them. Last night, a um, little bummed we didn't get to come in and, and see those guys, that they didn't stick around for another day. Got good friends on both those yachts. Pash is a 36 minute. Okay, so I don't think we'll be fender to fender with her. Yeah, looks like everyone's trying to seek shelter tonight. We've had this book birth. I think I booked this in in May. Bonifacio in August. You've uh, you've got to book book these slips a long way out. But um, but yeah, when this wind kicks in, best place to be is in Bonifacio here. Do you mind grabbing me another bottle of water, please? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay, so we just got to wait for this traffic jam to uh, clear up. We've got uh, the Heeson gems all the way at the front. She'll go into one of the side two slips down here, which they stack all the vessels up to about 55 meters in. And then the boats over 55 go all the way down where we're going. So, um, besides the, uh, thank you, besides the Star Clipper, it looks like we're going to be the uh, biggest boat in the dock tonight. But they don't count, because they're a cruise ship. <laughs> and a sailboat. And a sailboat. <laughs> okay, there we go, the drone is up. Drone is up, eye in the sky. So uh, besides getting all the beautiful footage, especially here in Bonifacio, Blair stays close to me because it gives me a really good bird's eye view of the vessel and how we're holding position. So when I have to do my 180 spin in a minute, Blair, it's actually really, really good and easy. I can just look at uh, the drone footage from Blair and, uh, and see how much distance I've got on my bow, my stern and down the sides. So uh, it works really nicely like that also. And the wind's dropping nicely. We're down to nine knots of wind so it was 32 35 outside i'm just hitting oh, oh, copy that thanks bjorn you said starboard bonifacio marina what do you got learn okay so you can proceed for 200 meters just in front of your on the commercial boat you can pay for your turn and stand on standby, your turn completed. Yes, copy that, sir. I'll come forwards 200 meters, spin in front of the commercial dock, and then stand by until called. Okay, copy. Okay, so there we go. We've got permission. Hopefully, this other little guy stays out of our way, and um, we can come in and start our turn. Then we have probably about a, co a col a kilometre to back up. So this is one of the longest backups that we have to do. So we have to go backwards the whole way down the channel. It's got a couple of zigzags in it. They definitely didn't make it easy for us. And, uh, and then we've got to drop two anchors and put it on the docks. So this one, you know, tests the skills sometimes. Luckily, luckily the wind's dropped out though. It's actually one of the tenders we're looking at for sure. Got a fjord? Nice. We nearly bought, rather than the Ambera, we were looking at the fjords as well. But uh, really liked the Ambera that we ended up building. So super excited to finally take delivery of that next week. 
Wednesday. And uh, yeah, it's going to meet us in Croatia. They're built in Rimini in Italy. So from Rimini on the east coast of Italy, it's just a short little hop across to uh, uh, Croatia where we're going to be. So it was a really nice you know, easy decision rather than having to drive it all the way around Italy to come join us. Yeah, I think it was only like 230 miles yeah. from Rimini to where we're going to be in Dubrovnik, so um, it was easy. Okay, so hopefully these little guys get moving because I'm almost in my spot where I need to spin. So we'll hit the brakes here. So 2.8 knots of boat speed. You'll see it coming down now. I'm astern, about 700, 800 RPM. You go so, to port? Bow to port, keep her in the deep water. What's her name? Aldonza. Give them a call. Murray Aldonza, Aldonza, Loon Loon. Aldonza, Aldonza, Loon Loon. Yes, good afternoon, mate. This is Muddy Yacht Loon behind you. Uh, can you just creep forwards a little bit for me, please? Uh, I'm a 220-foot yacht uh, spinning here. Uh, just come forwards a bit. Come ahead. Okay, here we go. Spinning. What? Say so stand by. Why? Why? Not seeing anything. I think we left now. Okay, spinning her around. You can see we're nice and close on the bow, maybe 10, 15 meters off on the bow, and the stern's going to be about the same. I'm actually going to come forwards a little bit to make sure that our stern is clear on the Yankee Clipper here. I am full bow thrusting as well. Of course, here's another little sailboat trying to get in our way on our bow, as you can see, this uh, star-powered vessel, just to continue making our life easy. Sailboat is without sails every time. Paul has a, a love-hate relationship with sailboats. A lot of love, a whole lot of love. And I don't know. Hate's not the word. Annoyance? Yeah. But we all share the ocean, so just got to tolerate them. Okay, so I'm still just thrusting here. I've got my camera over here so I can see my stern. So I'm watching that. Um, and then we're just going to keep holding station until the port gives us clearance to keep coming down the channel. Got all the guests up in the sun deck, enjoying the view. I thought I didn't have a thruster. Now we're going to do it again. There we go. Now we're thrusting. Okay, 
When he says sailboat, does he mean the cruise ship behind us? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so second off of Bjorn is on the transom. He's, uh, he's my eyes and ears back there. So he'll be communicating, knowing that I can't see much. He's often telling us what he can see and, uh, and relaying it back up to the bridge. Give us some thrust power now. Let's walk the whole boat across the port. What do you do there? Which one? So I'm port ahead, starboard astern, rudder full to starboard, bow thruster full to port. Yeah. So that's going to walk the whole boat nice. across. And just full thrusting? No, about 80%. Yeah. But um, looking good so far. I know it just it gets a little shallow over this side, whereas I can come a long way to port. So I'd rather just get that gap nice and open for me. We'll just keep walking it while we can. Right, hit me with a question while we're at it. Yeah. Let's do it. Does your draft uh, prevent you from uh, visiting a few ports and places? Definitely. Definitely. We have a 3.7 meter draft, so we are quite deep. So yes, there definitely are some ports that we're restricted in, but not too many, especially in the med. Most of them are deep water med, uh, berths. Uh, can't go into some barts anymore, unfortunately. That's always a favorite that uh, we've, we've lost, but, uh, but we can anchor right outside. So. What's your heart rate doing at the moment? <laughs> How do I, How do I do that? Heart rate, 96. 96. You need to calm down a little bit. Do we have any stern thrusters on here? No, no stern thrusters on, no. on here. A lot of yachts don't have stern thrusters. Uh, we just have the, we have the legs. So we just split our throttles and then use the rudder and then we can, we can crab walk her like that. So uh, no, but it, work, it works nicely. Even last year, use a thrust on the tender. So. And that's it. You got to learn. Yeah, thrusters are. Try not to use the thrusters too much. Um, learn to drive your boat without a thruster. So then, the day that you don't have one, uh, you know how to drive it. So um, I do try to minimally use a bow thruster. There we go. So let's see now. I don't know if you guys can see that, but we're just sitting there nicely. Got the uh, star clipper off to our port side. Free, I'll take that. You want to take it over again? Yeah. So we're just, just in a holding pattern right now. Hear the radio chattering. I think that last boat that was just in front of us, um, the Al Aldonza, I think her name was. Um, she's just docking, and then once she's clear, we'll we'll come in. So, what do you think? Um, would we be able to um, fit through the bridge in St. Martin? <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to that one. <laughs> That's definitely going to be a fun one. So, yes, definitely, we will be uh, we will be coming through the bridge in St. Martin. Yes, uh, be the yeah. loon will be the biggest boat I've taken through. But uh, always a fun time, always gets the heart rate going. But hey, you can dock in Bonifacio, you can go through the bridge in St. Martin. So. Yeah. Looking forward to it. So that should be our first trip in through the bridge should be either late November or early December, I think. Uh, and then we'll probably end up going through uh, numerous times over the season. Yeah. Can we the Yes, please.
Okay, so we're still just holding station. Got a. Uh, just making sure that we're here. Same as I, I don't know for those of you that tuned in the last live stream, I always find like somewhere fixed on the ground, line it up with like an edge of a window or something. And if I'm falling backwards or forwards, it let me know if we're coming backwards or astern. Remember, we are on the water, so we're constantly moving. And of course, there's a ferry coming in. So uh, I think we're going to get told to. M we're going to get told to back it up real quick. So let's get out of here. Um, someone's asking how long is the trip to the Caribbean from here? Trip, trip to the Caribbean is about 14 days. I'm going to move up to uh, Port, Port Bridgering real quickly here, guys. So, yep, just so I can. Okay. Thank you. So, out of the way of this ferry. Okay, he's honking at us, so I guess we better get going. Yeah. Let me try and change these cameras so these guys can see. Hey, I'm on Port Bridge Ring. Port Bridge Ring. Uh, keep telling me starboard and a stern, please. <laughs> yeah, he's honking at us, hey? So here he goes, he's doing his spin now. We're just gonna hold here. We're still waiting on permission for the last boat. We've got another about 100 meters to run, then we can start bringing the French zone over to Stolen. Yeah, copy that. So we're, I think the, that last boat looks like they're starting to finish up their docking, so we're just gonna slowly proceed in and hopefully the, uh, the dock hands catch up with us. So um, let's start doing it. What's the big camera you got on the uh, arm? You've got a stern? Uh, I've got forward facing at the moment, so they can see the ferry coming in. Ferry? About to change it to arc. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah. Okay, so we're just going to keep coming astern here. Nice and easy. Ty, so can you get that alarm, please? Right in the center of the channel. Thank you, Blair. So. Okay. Okay, here we go, so. The guys in the red tenders are pushing us down, so we have permission to go now. So I'm just going to bring my bow over to port a little bit, straighten up with the channel, and keep her coming. So, wind's dropped off. We're down to about 10, 11 knots, which is nice. Last time we were in here, it was blowing a lot more, so I'll definitely take this any day. Copy that, bum to starboard. Okay, so Bjorn on the back told me I can now start bringing my bum over. So we'll start doing that.
There we go, starting to straighten out now. So see that? I've split my sticks, which uh, brings the bum around. I've got a little bit of bow thruster on, but not much. So coming down the channel here, looking all good. You can see all the yachts over on my port side. I've just got to watch their ground lines. So they've all got lines out holding their bows in place. I just need to make sure that we're far enough off that we don't collect them. Okay, Paul, you're good to kick another to starboard. Um, we'll clear over our 15 meters. Yeah, copy that. Copy. Okay, straightening out, coming astern a little bit. At this line, you've got about 20 meters to play with on starboard quarter. 20 meters starboard quarter, copy. Okay, bringing the bomb to starboard, bomb to starboard. Okay, I can see the nose of the last yacht. I'm going to aim for that for now. Copy that. I'm good on this line. This line, you're perfect, Paul. I'll um, tell you when we get close to that gray boat. Yeah, good copy. So I can't see anything down my starboard side. So Bjorn is constantly telling me what's going on down that side of the boat. Once I round the nose of this sailboat, I want uh, this last yacht. Okay, Paul, starboard quarter is starting to open up a bit. You can come over to starboard a couple of meters. Uh, yep, I'm quite comfortable on this line for a little while, so I'll hold here, but I, uh, thank you. I see the last yacht. What's the reason that the bigger boats go to the, the back of the marina? Because all these guys are, are uh, side in in the channel that if we would have taken those side in, we would uh, block the entire channel. And so they send us all the way to the end to, uh, so that, to keep the channel open. Because all these boats here, are the biggest one is probably Jem that actually just pulled in the Heeson. Okay, well, we've got 15 meters starboard quarter. 245? We put the 180, we did put the 180 loon uh, the 55 meter one on, on this wall. So I guess they are, uh, you know, they can do up to a probably about, that's probably about as big as they would do. Otherwise, uh, everyone would be hanging out. Yeah, copy, walking the bum to starboard a little bit. Copy that. Okay, straightening out. So, uh, Paul, this yacht that's sticking out the furthest here on your port side, his ground line is just leading um, a little far out. You do have about 15 meters starboard side. 15 meters starboard side, copy. All right, I'll take a little bit more of that. So this last yacht here, Bjorn's just told me his ground line's sticking out a little bit. I can just see it down here. So I'm just going to come a little bit more to starboard. Okay, how's that line? Well, that's perfect, Paul. As soon as we pass this ground line, then we can shift back. Yeah, copy, copy. Do we use a pilot to dock here? No, we don't have to use a pilot to dock here. Um, I think the ferries might have to. Paul, do the ferries have to use a pilot to dock here? Uh, we don't have to. I don't know if the ferries do, no, to tell no. you the truth. I didn't see a, ferry, a pilot boat go no. out to pick them up. I often like it when the ferry, when the pilots come on board. They're usually pretty cool guys. We get, uh, they sometimes leave us free pens. <laughs> <laughs> Love a good free Love pen. Love a good free pen. Uh, we can come another about 15 meters on this line and then slowly bring it over to port. 
15 metres this line then to Port Cobby. Uh, Tyler got a Swiss Army knife last year in Porto Ferrario. What? Oh, yeah. Took it at home. Got taken away by customs. I wish I knew that when we were in Porto Ferrario. I would have, uh, yeah. I would have asked for one. It would be worth, you know? Yeah. There's just one more ground line on the port side that we need to worry about, but I'll tell you once we get to it. Yeah, copy it. I see it. We're good. Okay. So once I'm past this last shot, I'm actually going to change wing stations, guys, and I will move over to the starboard side. Okay, copy that. Someone is asking, what do the crew do on their day off? There's actually a video that I think we might be making shortly about that. Just to give you a little look at... Okay, Paul, on our current line, scenes. we're going to have about 7 metres starboard side. 7 metres starboard side. Copy. I'm going to take a little bit more port and then I'm going to straighten it yeah, out. It does change. Yeah. yeah, copy that. We're coming in line with the furthest ground line now, so anything off that, you're good. Let me run about another 10 metres here, Ty. And then I'll let you take command. Okay, so I always want to drive from the side that's got the most danger to the yacht. So right now it was obviously the port side coming past all the bows of these yachts. And, uh, and then once I get past these guys, the wind is blowing us towards starboard. So I'll move over to that side. How I often judge that is what's the more expensive thing to hit. Uh, and so obviously a whole bunch of super yachts docked, very expensive to hit. And then after that, we've now got a bunch of uh, big sail cats and everything over on our starboard side. And with the wind pushing us that way, I want to be on that side as we drive. On this line, we're going to have five meters clear on starboard side to Catamaran. Five meters clear to Cat. Okay, copy. All right, take it, Ty. Cool, take it, Just let me know when you move over to starboard. Yeah, I'm moving now. You got to take command. Yeah. Wheelhouse. Yeah, I'm in wheelhouse. Perfect. They'll send it to me. Yep, sending over. Say when. Coming through. Yeah, it should be sending over now. Okay, I got it. Yeah, copy. I'm bringing the whole stern over to uh, to bring the stern over to starboard now. Okay, copy. Uh, looks like they were just picking somebody up. Okay, Paul, you've got 15 meters to the vessel behind us. If you can swing over to starboard, please. Okay, there we go. Now I've got it stopped. Nice. You're going good, man. He's going to bring her over. Okay, boy, you've got five meters to the catamaran directly off your port quarter. Five meters, port quarter, copy, copy. have a head on starboard then in the trend. We'll get down there. Now we're fine. Okay, there we go. Straightening out. Yeah, copy. It was just in the bridge wing change. I'm good now. Yep, copy that. So uh, the marina guys are in the tenders. You'll see them in the little red shirts. They really guide us in. So um, so he's just telling okay, us. Okay, Paul, we are holding 10 meters to the catamaran of our port quarter. 
copy that. I've got good lines on starboard side here, so I'm just going to come straight on this if I'm good on your side. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be starboard first, and then we'll go over and we'll drop port rear. So, so we got the cats here, the ones I was telling you about, the ones that you don't want to hit. So um, that's why I'm now over here on Stafford's head. <laughs> Alright, what you got, Blair? Paul, well, someone says there's uh, 2,000 people here. Well, the boat's um, sitting on your starboard side, that's where you want starboard anchor, <laughs> and then shift over oh, to port for port really anchor. Try. Copy that, I'll drop it on top of him. Right in front of this cat, yeah? <laughs> well, someone says there's 2,000 people watching you dock this, don't, don't mess it up. <laughs> what? On light or on the dock? <laughs> so, okay, Bruce, stand by to drop starboard anchor. Uh, the guys in the boat are coming past my midship now. Okay, so we're just coming past the sailboat here. Just to confirm, you don't want any fenders on. Nah, we're good. No fenders, no fenders. Okay, drop, 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 starboard anchor, drop. And there it goes. Okay, let that one run. I'm now walking the whole boat to port. I'm gonna walk the whole boat to port here and uh and drop port anchor. Someone's asking if Paul has ever hit the chase boat, and it's no, he hasn't hit the chase boat with okay, big so <laughs> Big thrust there. <laughs> big much, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we're just walking all the way over to the other side of the channel now um, to drop our port anchor. So, uh, port corner, we're holding 20 meters to the boat. Yeah, copy. Do you want to go to port wing and tell me when the guy says to drop, Ty? So, I'm just walking the whole boat. So, I've got split sticks, bow thruster pushing us over. I basically just got to judge the bow thruster with the stern. Just to try and give everyone an aerial view here of what, what space we're, we're dealing with. This is, um, this is how much space we have, and it's honestly not much. It's yeah, literally copy. a couple of meters on each side. Talk to me, Ty. Oh, come on, Tristan, what was that message? <laughs> Okay, coming to stern. Oh, there we go. Tristan says looking sharp, Paul. Copy. We're yeah? holding Tristan says looking sharp. <laughs> hey, Tris. Say that one again, Bjorn. For us, um, on this line, we're going to have to come over to starboard um, after you drop the anchor. Yeah, understood. Okay, drop port, drop port, drop, drop, drop. Okay, so the guy in the tenders just told us to drop, so there you go, you can hear it. 
So now I've got to walk the whole boat back to the center of the channel. So we walked all the way to. Four on the bottom, break off. Yep, copy. Let both of them run, please. A little bit of pressure on starboard as we come astern, as obviously it's got a big dog leg in it. Hey? Copy. Okay, Paul, you're good to come astern. Copy that, coming astern. Okay. So now, just basically, my job's keeper in the center of the channel. Make sure that all everything stays far away from us. Got all the tourist boats trying to squeeze past us, but I'm about to block them all. You can hear the anchors running, same as docking in Monaco. I'm always listening, making sure that I hear those anchors paying out because a second if they were to bite, they could pull up, pull my bow to port and starboard and pull me into something. So I'm always um, listening, making sure that they're running. They're asking why do we drop the anchors so early? Uh, that is actually, they did drop us quite early. Uh, so, uh, but they, they basically, the more chain out, the better we stay. Okay, so uh, there's a bit of a wind at the moment, a bit more forecasted through the night. So the more chain in the water, the safer we are. So just to go back on what Paul has just said, the reason we drop anchors before we dock is we use them to pull us off the dock when we're going stern in. So we drop them somewhere in the middle of the port and then back up, running them loose. And uh, we'll put our stern lines on and then slowly take up our anchors and then we'll use those anchors to pull us off the dock. Copy, Matty, just to confirm, there where you're standing right now is where the middle of our circle is. Okay, got some shade again, so I can take the sunnies off, so see what's going on. Okay, Paul, we've got another about 70 meters to run. 70 meters to run, 7-0. So here, keep hearing those anchors running. Yes, we do. Okay, hold on. I'm going to stop it and then uh, I want to move to port wing because I'm on starboard side. So hold on. Let's just uh, slow everything down here, guys. Yeah, copy. Not yet, but we will. So the port just informed us that we're actually, they wanted us initially on the stub, hard up against this green boat on our starboard side. But now they've just said that they want us hard up against the boat on our port side. Okay, so, Paul, I'm switching back over to starboard quarter. Yeah, I'm changing wing stations too. Okay, take it. Can you the camera? Yep. Send it. Okay, I'm in Port Wing and I got command. Thank you. So he wants us hard up against this little tourist boat thing? Yes, sir. Copy that. Come in a stern. Okay, so you always want to dock the boat on the wing station of the boat that you're tying up alongside. So uh, they've now told us they want us hard up against this uh, little tourist boat over there. So we're going to move the whole boat over to port and we're going to tie up to it. Okay, I'm in neutral. I'm just going to drift it. We've got about 50 meters to run to the dock. Copy that. I'm in the center of the hole, right? Uh, you're a little bit over to starboard right now, um, but if we come over to port a bit, we'll be center. Copy that. Bum to port.
Okay, how's that looking? Yeah, we're center. Okay, coming to stone. Okay, where are we at, Rue? How much train you out? I've got port and starboard on four shackles. Four shackles. Four shackles, port and starboard. Copy. So four shackles, 27.5 meters to a shackle. About 25 meters to run. So a little over 100 meters of chain out on both sides. Bjorn's just telling me uh, 25 meters to run. So that's going to be about five shackles by the time we're in the uh, berth. We have about seven and a half to eight shackles on board. So we've got plenty of chain. So we might as well keep it all out. Hey, Matty, Matty, Matty. Does he want our port straight back where you're standing? Okay, so we're getting to that point now where we're getting close. We're probably oh, 25, 30 meters away from the dock. So I'm going to slow her down. And uh, pull about 20 meters to the dock. You can start slowing her down slowly. <laughs> See, as I said, so uh, we'll start slowing her down. When we get to about 10 meters, the boys can get the lines across. And then I just hold it in the slip while uh, they sort the lines out and then um and then as we get then i can walk it back those last couple of meters once we're in the hole okay paul we've still got 15 meters to run one five copy Okay, she's coming slow, astern slowly now. Now we're getting close, we just move nice and slow. So, it's gonna call me 10 meters any minute now. Then, it, then I'll start slowing it down even more. 10 meters to the dock. 10 meters. Copy that, 10 meters. Got about 25% bow thruster, just sort of keeping that bow under control, pushing us across to uh, the port side here. Okay, Rue, you can hold on anchors for now. Hold on anchors, we'll pull them out. Okay, Paul, we can run about three, four more, more meters and then you can start walking over. Three, four more meters, copy. Just move that camera so you guys can see there's actually quite a big crowd gathering on the dock here. Long yeah, copy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Paul, currently we are five meters off the dock. I'll stop her at two meters. Yep, copy, copy. Okay, give me a bit more on starboard there, please, man. Copy, port side, long stay as well. Actually, we're still coming back, it's fine. I'm just pulling the I'm pulling the slack out. Okay, Paul, I'm gonna start sending lines. Yep, copy, send lines. I'm in neutral. Okay, we've got three meters. I'll let you know when we can give a kick ahead. Three meters to the dock, copy. And so with first lines are across. The first ones we send are the straight backs. Oh, kick ahead, kick ahead. Kicking ahead, copy. Uh, okay, Rue, you can uh, lock off the anchors, please. Prepare to take up. Yep, copy. 
Just remember, we've got a lot of chain out beyond, so you know we'll get slingshot forwards. Okay, copy that. Okay, so the straight backs are on now. So they're the ones that go straight back. They're the ones that stop us going fore and aft. The boys are just getting the crossovers over. So one goes from the port quarter over to the starboard side and from the starboard side okay, over Paul, to the port side. All we need to do is bring it over to port. Whole boat to port, copy. You ready? I'm gonna put the, straight bar, the crossovers on right now. Give me one second. Yeah, let me know when you're ready. So Bjorn now with a one that's over tight. I'm gonna find out how tight. Currently we have about two and a half meters on our port side to the other boat. Uh, Bjorn will be able to tell me in a second how much more they want us to bring over. So, so far so good. I'd say that's almost another successful one. Yeah, almost. <laughs> almost. Almost. We're not quite there yet, but we're 99% yeah. of the way. So uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get that last 1%. Yeah. Massive shout out to the 2,000 people watching us live right now. 2,000 people. Yeah. Woo! Thank you, everyone. Welcome to Bonifacio. It's, uh, what is it? It's just gone 7 p.m. Been a... Uh, just gone 8 p.m. Wow, it took okay, us an Paul, hour and a half to get in. Quarter, we're holding about one meter right now. Um, if we can bring the bow over to port a little bit and then just a little bit astern. Bow to port, little astern. Copy that. So Bjorn on the back there, still giving me instructions. So saying basically wants me to get now straight parallel with a uh, angle to the dock, 90 degrees to the dock. So um, just got one leg astern, got my bow thruster, just bringing the nose over a little bit. And there we go, we're lining up square to the dock now. And he's probably going to tell me to bring the boat across about another meter or so. Paul, we're good there. If you can just give us one kick ahead and then we'll tighten up on lines. Small kick ahead, copy. Okay, there we go. Let me know if you need another one. Okay, so looks like we're in. Um, always a fun one in Bonifacio here. Coming in, that big back down the channel. Good short stay on both anchors. Yep, copy that there, Roo. Uh, I'll get you to take up in a second, man. So that's Roo up forwards, working the anchors, uh, telling me that both of them are short stay, which means the chains are straight up and down. What we want to do is we'll bring them up to about a medium tension in a little bit, and that will pull the boat forwards and keep her centered while fighting against the lines in the back that basically hold us to the dock and keep her centered. So it's kind of a push and pull situation here. There's a lot of people asking what drone we're using. Oh. You're the uh, you're the drone boy. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. We are currently we're using the DJI Mavic 3 Pro. That's our go-to at the moment. But um, we've got a regular Mavic 3, two Avatars on board, um, the first FPV, and like the Mini, a whole bunch of a whole selection of drones. Yeah, we have so many because Blair loses them. <laughs> So we need to have backups for uh, for when he does. How many of Archers have you lost? I mean, okay, let's let's take this a step, year. let's take a step back a bit. <laughs> it was a bad month. It was one bad month. I lost two. I lost three drones in one month. Yeah. And before month. that, before that, it was none. I'd never lost a drone. No. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure you lost a Nevada and uh, the BVIs. No, no, no. No, you didn't. No, no, no. That was. Um, <laughs> that was a warranty claim. That wasn't me. <laughs> that was a warranty yeah. play. <laughs> he, lo he lost a uh, Vata and the uh, BVIs as well. He nearly hit me, actually. I was on the E-foil, oh, and it uh, went <laughs> past my head. Uh, Rue, Boson Rue up forwards, also lost a Mavic 3 uh, yeah. as well in a yeah. kite surfing. Kite surfing we dance. We both me and Blair decided to go kiting, so uh, we said to Rue, get Rue, some cool footage. Are you tightening up on that good ship? Oh, stay by. Okay, can you start pulling up on starboard, please? Just to show you guys how beautiful this port is. Okay, so it sounds like the lines are across. 
and sorts it in the back. So now we're going to we're going to pull us forwards a little bit and put some tension on those lines. Do you want to go down, Ty, and make yep. sure everything's good? Pass around, great length, please. Cool. Um, and yeah, so we put a drone up in, where was that? That was in St. Martin, wasn't it? We were riding yeah. with uh, Theo and the Cabrina riders. Yeah, that's and, it. And uh, the one instruction Rue had was do not hit any kites. <laughs> and as long as you keep the drone above 22 meters, yeah, you're safe. On, uh, I think it lasted five minutes. Five minutes, he was inside those lines, <laughs> drone in the water. Drone in the water. Absolutely total. Thank you. But, um, Cool. Well, that's us in. I'm pretty much done. So welcome to Bonifacio, everyone. Thank you for this yeah. ride along with us. Yeah, definitely. Uh, any more quick Q&As before yeah. we, uh, we finish up? A couple last questions come through. And uh, yeah, then we'll see you in the next one. But yep. I'll, I'll get those questions. Yep. Give, give us a while blast looking at some questions there. Guys, don't forget to head on over to our Instagram, at Loon. Give us a, uh, a follow over there, a like. Uh, we are, I think we hit 94,000 followers today, so we're getting that close to 100. So please head on over to our Instagram, give us a, uh, a follow over there. Basically, um, guys, we put up a lot of daily content on there. We put up lots of stories of where we are and what we're doing, that what we can't share in the long form on the Instagram. So uh, awesome. What else you got? Have you ever been starstruck by a guest before? Ooh. Because <laughs> we, get, we get a lot of, a lot of famous people come through. Yeah. Like, Thing. Do I get starstruck? Uh, no, my problem is half the time I uh, don't recognize them. We had a uh, very big A-list celebrity come on board uh, last year in the Bahamas. Thick is to get rid of the starstruckness, especially with crew, is they'll just come up and introduce themselves. So they'll be like, hi, I'm so-and-so, hi, I'm so-and-so. Yeah. And I was actually up in the bridge and um, this lady walked into the bridge and like before she could say anything, I said, excuse me, ma'am, but this is a crew area and we're in the middle of maneuvers. Do you mind leaving? And uh, Maxine was like kicking me under the table going, do you know who that is? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, and that happened with a, that's happened with a few others as well. So, I mean, they don't always, they're always a little bit smaller than you expect them to be. And, yeah. you know, when they're in normal clothes and without all their makeup, you never really, never really know who. It's not the same. It's not the same. But yeah, it is interesting to meet all these famous people that, that come on board. It is very interesting. Yeah. Should we take another one? All right. One more. So, well, that last one, guys, we do have our new video dropping this Sunday. Uh, it's an engine room tour, right? That's it. First time we have shown the engine room on YouTube. I know a lot of people have asked for it. Uh, and so uh, the engineers have been busy cleaning down there. And, um, you know, it should be a good one. First time we're showing even the engineers on camera. Uh, Alex, our chief engineer on board, is super excited about it. He's been busy with his pronunciations and he's been down there with a scrubbing brush making sure everything's nice and tidy. So definitely a, an exclusive first this weekend coming on Sunday, 8 p.m., right Blair? That's at 8 p.m. on the dot. 8 p.m. It <laughs> won't be 8 p.m. It'll be half past eight, did. nine. <laughs> um, there's a couple people asking for a quick breakdown of your career, how you've gotten here. I know we've spoken about it before, but... Um, yep. So, I grew up in Perth, Western Australia, uh, and sailed there. Uh, I started in Optimists, the little sailing boats, went through to Lasers, Etchels, and then got into the keel boats, sailed in the America's Cup for a little bit, and then uh, in uh, New Zealand, and then moved over to the yachting side. Uh, I started at the bottom like everybody else. Uh, I started as a deckhand, um, but luckily for me, I did come in with a lot of boating experience, so I was able to climb the ranks quite quickly. I was a bosun about a year, two years into my career, and then um, did my OOW very quickly, got an officer position on an 80 meter, and then decided that I wanted to become a captain quite quickly, so I actually went down from that 80 meter all the way down to a 110 foot yacht, and uh, drove that for a number of years, and now I'm sort of working my way back up. But um, I've been loving working on the Loon. I've been here with the Loon owner and the Loon program since its beginning in 2017, and uh, have really enjoyed staying with the owner and progressing as he buys new yachts, staying with him. And uh, you know, I don't think this will be the last Loon either. Yeah. I, I mean, we only just bought this one in April, so I don't want to, <laughs> you know, say too much. But I wouldn't be surprised that in a in a couple of years' time, we even have another we have another mm. bigger Loon again. So ninety five meters. <laughs> <laughs> no, mind. We've got to enjoy this one for a little bit first. Uh, I mean, this boat's gorgeous. What is there not to love? So for sure. Mm -hmm. 
epic. Cool. Yeah, cool. Are we going to call it there? I think so. I mean, yeah, massive shout out to the 1,800 people watching this, 1,600. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. We'll definitely do more of this soon. I hope that the connection was a bit better this time. We, we kicked all the crew off the Wi-Fi. It looks like it was better. That always helps. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let us know in the comments quickly if, if the connection was better. But, yeah, I think that's about it. And just make sure you check out Sunday's video. For the yeah. Room tour. Excellent, guys. Thank you so much. been an absolute pleasure. And uh, we'll see you next live. Next live docking will be, when are we going to do the next one? Portachovo in a couple of days? Portachovo, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. let's do Portachovo. So we're docking there in a few days' time. So we'll uh, throw the live camera up again and let you guys follow us. But we can also do the laundry with Paige and galley with Nina. So 100%. Awesome. Anyway, guys, thank you very Sweet. much. Pleasure for joining us. Cheers. Okay. And that. Holy.